Wow, wow, hey, amazing. Is my kid gonna share the truck? Is she gonna share the Ram TRX? Guess what I'm gonna drive? Guess what I'm gonna do right now? I'm gonna drive the Ram TRX today as I work out of it, and I'll give everybody my impressions of working out of the Ram TRX 2021 that I just purchased, and let you know if I think we did the right thing or the wrong thing. And what's already driving me crazy is I can't get the, uh, the ways to, uh, to unlock, or whatever you gotta do, unlock your phone. So this is kinda complicated. So hold on a second here. Wow, wow, hey, amazing. It's sharing day. The kid's out driving something else, so I'm driving this. Hey, it's the Ram TRX 2021 that we just purchased this past weekend, used, and I've never driven it. I've never driven the Ram TRX truck. My daughter has driven it, meaning, driven this truck. I have driven the Ram TRX, but I never test drove or have driven the Ram TRX truck that I just bought that took me two plus years to finally get a deer to go down. The kid's been hogging it, she's been driving it, but my sharing conversations are so appropriate because today we're gonna share the ride with the Ram TRX. So stay tuned for my videos that will populate later on my experience in my Ram TRX with that Hellcat motor in it. So stay tuned for the review of the Ram TRX that I just picked up, used. And the sharing adventure begins. First thing we're gonna do is what mode, we go to the modes here. So what mode is this thing in? Custom, huh? Auto. Where'd the kid have the custom one on? So, I'd be intrigued to know what that is. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing. Now, does this have the automatic brake release? Yes, it does. If your seatbelt is on. So, I've had the Ram. Anybody watch my channel? I had a 2019 Ram 1500 Limited all decked out. And beautiful truck. So, I'm very similar. I'm very, very kind of, you know, accustomed to the truck per se. Interior technology to a degree but i didn't never have this the trx trx for those that watch the channel it's the hellcat supercharged 700 plus horsepower badass badass truck but it's badass but it's also bad at how much fuel it guzzles so this is the first time since this truck has been purchased that i've actually driven the truck so i've never have driven this truck um even though I bought it. <laughs> and I rode it my daughter, she drove it, and I could just tell by the personality and the characteristics, characteristics of the truck, this is a good truck, but I've never have really lived behind the wheel of it. So now, this will be my first day of me actually living behind the wheel of a truck. And one thing we're sure, this is a big, beefy truck. And I've talked about this many times on my uh, very limited experience of driving the truck around and just sharing my feelings on how it drives such like a big ass beefy truck where my ford raptor if you really are in tune with my channel you know i have a ford raptor i've had a lot of ford raptors and i have the latest ford raptor 37 and i just recently drove the ford raptor r so for me i really think the ford raptor r has more power than this does but once again, this is such a big truck. It is such a truck. I can't emphasize enough on how this thing is an animal. It really is. Um, it's wider. It's beefier. You can probably hear the tires right now. And just sitting in a truck right now, it's just a lot of truck. But it's a truck. And that's what I think draws people to it. It's a truck. I mean, it doesn't give you that wimpy feeling it gives you the big beefy ass badass i'm a truck attitude and so once again this is the first day i'm driving the only complaint i really have right this second is the tires the tires in my opinion make too much noise and the truck has 21,000 miles on the uh, odometer 21,237 miles this has the level two package which gives you the adaptive cruise control gives you the panorama moon roof um gives you the heated seats the heated steering wheel and gives you the 
you know, a little more upgraded interior per se from, I guess, the level one. Um, there may be a few things here that I'm t not totally accurate on for anybody out there that has a Ram truck. Feel free to, uh, to weigh in because I have so many vehicles. I have so many damn cars and trucks and motorcycles. I mean, there's just so much information that goes on that for me to be on every little detail of this truck, I'm not because I'm not the guy that's totally fixated on just me having this truck. Meaning that I was never like on the internet researching this truck day in, day out, looking at all the specs. I know the truck. I've always wanted the truck, but I but that just kind of really came to closure. It just wasn't meant to be because these trucks have been holding their value. There's one thing about these Ranch RX, they have been holding their value incredibly. A lot longer than I thought they'd ever hold the value. I think they're they're now coming down along with the rest of the market. For those out there looking for a nice used TRX, I think the more you send it out, there's a possibility you're going to get a little better deal than you may get a bigger deal better than me or maybe just a little better. So here we are. Plenty of power. So this thing right now, just kind of to push down the gas pedal and to get her go, she goes. Steering wheel on this thing feels a little, a little heavy, but not real heavy. But it gives you definitely that feel of you got these big ass tires on there. Right now it's a cold day up here in Virginia. You can see it's 55 degrees out. And I've got the heated steering wheel on. I've got the heated seats on, which is really nice. You see that up there on the screen. The screen, I like the screen. Some people don't like that. I do. And for me, being the first time I've driven the truck, I kind of set the seat up. And it's it's okay. I'm about to adjust this. Okay, well, I'm already getting ready. To, I'm already getting in tune with this truck. It's so cool. This has the rear view camera, the rear view camera activation versus the regular mirror. So that is really cool. I love that. I was kind of wondering all these little buttons are right up in, underneath here. I guess that's for different how far or close you want the uh, the car behind you. So I'm really liking that. So I guess that's a level two option. And as I say, if, if the regular mirrors here's the regular mirror and then you can go here and there's the rear camera which i like that some people don't like that but that's really cool so right so i guess that's a level two option uh also it has the heads up display once again i'm kind of taking assumptions here so anybody that's a ramp direct person that really is into the uh every fine detail of level one level two level three be more than i'll be more than happy to hear your ideas and views of uh, what you know over with me, which that's fine. I'm not here to tell you I'm as smart as the bunch by any means. So, once again, the truck, big, big feeling truck. And one thing that I always has kind of, in some ways, held me back is the fuel economy. Because, I mean, I know for a lot of people, they, they're like, man, I can't believe you would hold yourself back on buying this truck because of the fuel economy, well, I do a lot of miles. I do about 150, 200 mile days. And to me, it's just kind of like, uh, if I do, if I just drive this truck on a daily basis, then I would be putting in this truck 15 gallons, probably an average of 15 gallons a day. And when you have, in our today's market, basically four plus, uh, $4 gas, you're, really close to seventy dollars a day of me buying fuel well you do that every day that kind of gets old anybody knows that story but here's the thing i got lots of cars and trucks and this is not going to be a daily driver by any means but it's just a heads up a courtesy to those out there that i think that you know you get on the open road and you're kind of not getting too crazy i think it's 12 mile per gallon is probably possible but it's the same story with the Raptor R, any of these high performance big trucks. But here's the thing, even my Ford Raptor 37, it's like a 16 mile per gallon vehicle, but I've had a Ford Raptor that I sold last year, it was getting like 14 miles a gallon, the V6. So it isn't like, I mean, so in some ways you'd say, so you can have this badass Hellcat Ram truck and have a two to four mile per gallon difference. I'll take the badass Hellcat Ram truck by keeping well. It's at, at the price I paid for this used, it's all day long a, a regular Raptor truck, 
which that's very uh, impressive. So as always, we're stuck behind the other people that don't want to go to speed limit. So we'll get up here in some back roads and a little bit more free spirited time here for you. Yeah, it's a lot of truck. I can just kind of drive this now kind of on the back roads, back end. Yeah, it's a lot of truck. I mean, it's a big truck. If it's anything you're going to go hot rodding down the back roads, uh, not so much. It, it soaks up the bumps, but it's a different type of uh, suspension from that Raptor series from Ford. And I think the Ford has a better suspension. I think it has a better uh, feel to it. I think Ford does a better job on how it eats up the bumps and handles that. But I've talked about that numerous times. And the thing is, for those who watch my channel, I think some think I'm very critical of the Ram TRX, which I have been because I have the Raptors. But at the same time, it's pretty incredible to think about how I just paid $80,000 for a truck that if I want to try to get a Ford Raptor R used, uh, you're at 120 grand. So it's a $40,000 spread in price. And at the end of the day, is there $40,000 of, you know, more fun? Here's the kid. All right, I just put this truck into the sport mode over here in the drive modes. I reset the uh, fuel economy because uh, we were having some fun with this thing yesterday. So uh, now in the sport mode, how does this thing kind of feel? You can hear that supercharger, which that's pretty cool, isn't it? So this thing gets up the road really easily. Now the traction control is off this truck now, but I'm not really worried about that because this truck is such a big ass truck. For this thing to bust loose that easily, nah, I don't think it's going to happen. So now in the sport mode, definitely a little higher shifting range. Um, so it is a little bit more aggressive. aggressive. Steering wheel is definitely stiffer. So for me, I think I'm going to put it back in the, the auto mode just to see what I can do in the fuel economy. So now I'm back in the auto mode. So once again, I'm going to just kind of let this truck be its own little personality without trying to customize it yet. And just see how she rides around on the uh, auto. And once again, you can really feel, you can feel how big this truck is. That's one thing for sure when you drive this vehicle. It has a really big footprint. And you can feel it. Just by the way, the truck moves around. And yeah, once again, nobody's buying these trucks to go back roading with them. If you are, I don't know why you're buying this truck. But I don't think anybody has that. I think people have more sense than that. So then the question is, when it hits the bumps, you know, how does it feel? In the auto mode, not bad. Not bad. But once again, I think that the Raptor has the suspension over the uh, the TRX. I don't know what it's about that Raptor. Raptor just has a very fun, free-spirited attitude. It's very fun. And I haven't really tested the brakes yet. Hopefully I don't have to, but you never know. So now we're coming up on a pack of cars up here. So the brakes feel good. And I wonder if my kid, I'm pretty sure my kid put gas this thing because we did some drive around yesterday. Well, I was going to go one way, but we got a lot of, we got some big ass tractor trailer truck up here that's really putting down the road. And this other way I'm going, it's a very bad road. So I mean, there's so many imperfections of it. And it really beats you up. Any vehicle I drive, it really tends to beat you up. So. Let's just kind of see how that plays out with this truck, which once again, any vehicle I drive on this road, you get all the bumps, the jiggles, but it'll be good um, for any rattles. This truck has 21,000 miles. I mean, really where the technology of these vehicles are today, you really have to say more than ever, maintaining a vehicle, you should get a good 100 plus thousand miles out of the car with any major issues. 
if you stay on top of the maintenance of the vehicle. I mean, I really think more than ever, cars today are 150, 200,000 mile cars with uh, not any major issues besides just regular maintenance. So here we are, get out here, and this is where the road just kind of tosses you around because of uh, it's the back country road. Who doesn't know these stories, right? The, um, the center console is huge. You have two separate um, areas, and it's pretty creative what Ram did on this truck. They made it so you have like a top console, then you have a big bucket console where the one part opens up and you have a very shallow area, but then you have another area that opens up and it's the big deep uh, well of the uh, of the center console. So plenty of storage, you know, storage for your uh, mugs, storage for your cell phones, charging, even side storage, side storage over here for more water bottles. And once again, I talk about it all the time, and it blows me away and how much attention that Rivian gets. See, here we are. It's, it's this really just road that rocks you around. But I talk about it all the time and how the Rivian truck, I don't know how anybody that owns that truck can be happy with the front. There's just like no storage. And more than ever, most people work out of their trucks or travel. So having uh, the luxuries of be able to store your phone, your waters, your coffee, and then your, your nice big ass center console, then your side door pockets to put more gear and stuff. And then this probably has in the back the hidden uh, storage compartments underneath the floor. That's a whole other thing, a whole other little trick thing that, that Ram did. So Ram really does do a great job on the interior of these trucks. They really are nice, high level, high quality feel very luxurious and it really does um, just radiate nice and in so many ways better than Ford does I think that Dodge I should say Ram does a better job on fit and finish on the interior the feeling of a higher line vehicle than uh, Ford does so got the guy this is the guy here that is taking a side road. I think they wanted to get away from that tractor trailer, but he doesn't know these roads. I can just tell by the way this person is driving that they're not familiar. So now I'm behind another slowpoke. So this is one of those days where it's the slowpoke drive. But so far, really nice, but it's a lot of truck. Here's one thing about this vehicle for me. I can already tell. Would I be happy in this vehicle every day? I would not. It's just too big. It's too much. So for me, I live out of my cars and trucks, and there's just some vehicles that I drive, and they're really cool, they're badass, but this this just takes a lot out of you, because it's such, a lot, such so much material, you have to be constantly really abreast to where this truck is, because it's such a big vehicle, and you can feel it. it, it in some ways, it beats you up in some ways because it's so much material. And the way the suspension is designed, it has kind of a roly-poly type of uh, feel to it. And for that reason, it kind of rocks you around. And, and you know, once again, it kind of has the soft feel, but at the same time, it, it, it moves you around a lot. So I'm not here by any means complaining. I'm here to just share with you if, some, if I, somebody said to me, this is your primary truck, and I had to work out of it, I'd be like, no way. Nope, I'd be like, no way. This would not be the right vehicle to buy. If somebody said, hey, you want a really badass, cool truck that you can have to use? Um, yeah, cool, badass. But to be a regular work truck, no way. I mean, I'm sure somebody out there does that, but for me, I think there's better accommodations for you to uh, work, have a better style work truck. But that's, but once again, it's the play truck. It's the muscle truck. It's what Ram teased all the Hellcat guys for years. Whether you realize it or not, that's a fact. They had a prototype of this truck back like in 2018, I believe. Could have even been 2017. Of, hey, well, how, about, how about taking back after Dodge released the Hellcat, they got this hair up there took us and said let's just start putting a Hellcat motor in everything we build I mean in so many ways that's what they started doing which was pretty cool because 
You got the Hellcat Challenger, Hellcat Charger. Then they went to the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Then they went to the uh, Dodge Durango. And then people were begging them to put them in the, uh, the Jeep Wrangler or the Gladiator. They wouldn't do it. Um, and so then they went to the Ram product and they teased everybody with a what this thing would look like. And it was a really cool looking truck that they designed. And, and this here in so many ways looks like it, but not exactly like it. But we saw this and then everybody's clamoring to want one of these things. And it took them a while to kind of get it to come to the market. And sure enough, and then when they first came out, everybody was speculating it'd be about a $70,000, probably about a 70, maybe $80,000 truck. I can promise you, nobody ever thought this truck would be a buck 25, buck 35, buck 30 truck. But no, I'm talking about, I'm talking price, not ADM. So you're going to build this truck. I talked about it yesterday. If you build this exact same truck, which I did yesterday morning, uh, it came out at a buck twenty-four and change. So it's one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, it's actually in some ways more expensive than the Raptor R. Wow. But on the Raptor R, they're getting ADM, and on the Ram TRX. I don't know if they're getting the ADM anymore because a lot of these TRX trucks are now starting to populate. And I did a research. There's a lot of Ram TRX trucks brand new in my own backyard. So I don't think the dealers are getting this ADM anymore. I think the manufacturers just came to closure. These dealerships get to pocket an extra 20 grand, 30 grand. Why don't we just uh, pocket an extra 20, 30 grand? I mean, think it through. I think that's really what goes on in the automotive industry the dealership showed the manufacturers or people pay stupid money for these cars so the manufacturer behind the scenes just says you know what I think mean, it's time to jack the hell out of the I think we need to jack the prices of this thing because the dealers are making more money than we do and we sell them to them hey you don't think that goes on all right pretty cool pretty nice beautiful day out here chilly cold and uh there you go You see that? I really like that. That's the one touch for your panorama roof. I don't know why Ford does this, but it makes you push the button twice. So, top here, and you hit this button here to open this top. You hit it once, and the whole um, protective for the interior here, the glass, that opens up in one full touch. Versus Ford, it opens up halfway, and then you gotta do it again. It's like, I don't understand that. So for RAM, it's just a one-touch button that makes it so that you can just open it one time. See here, I just touched it once, and now it's opening all the way up all by itself, or did it? Oh, that is so funny. So it did not. <laughs> what is that all about? I just did that. So I guess you have to hold down the button longer. So that's interesting. I just learned something myself. So let's see if I'm right now. I'm going to hit the button to close it. I hit it and I held it a little longer than I usually do. And let's see if it goes all the way. Yeah, it does. So now I'm intrigued to see. Now I'm very intrigued to see what I did wrong. So I'm going to hold it a little longer. Oh, so, oh, so you got to do, you just touch it really quickly. If you do actually hold it a little longer, it does kind of stick. No. So that's very interesting. So to open it, it's always wrong. When you open it, it goes halfway. When it's all the way open, it just assumes you want to close it, and it just goes um, one touch. So I just learned that. Two touch to open it, one touch to close it. Not the technology, right? Isn't it so here we're in the, in the garage. Now, so when do we take it to, to right now? Something I haven't really even talked about is the exhaust note so inside the truck it has a nice it definitely has a nice exhaust note to it definitely has a nice uh you can hear the supercharger but i mean do you really want more i mean for me it's, it's pretty good i mean it's not not too shabby i have to i have to kind of be in truck for a good amount of time to really come to closure i know the kid a daughter's always going to want more noise. I mean, I already know that. There's, that's a no-brainer. You hear that supercharger kicking in? Yeah, so 
so for me but it's actually very nice so i don't know and that and if you go out and buy the course exhaust for this thing between if you have somebody install it and you buy it, you're a good two thousand plus dollars Oof! wow right so for me it works for me but i can I'm pretty sure you the kid will be like hey dad let's change out the exhaust They're like yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm very content and happy the way it is right now, personally. The guy's already tinted out the windows, so that's fine. Um, mud flaps. I think this thing needs mud flaps. But does that take away the look of the truck? I don't think it does. Some people may think it's a little gaudy. So to personalize it, I mean, the interior... Um, weather all weather things are fine and I don't know I mean really what else would you do this truck I mean I know it's be like oh you do you know an air intake you do a pulley swap out and eh, you know what no I'm not gonna do any of that I'm really not I just have too many cars and trucks I just have too many vehicles you start dumping all this extra money in these cars it gets very very expensive I mean so I'm just not gonna do it works for me so there's no way i'm gonna screw up the air intake truck's plenty fast enough it's a truck um exhaust yeah the exhaust i would say that the exhaust would probably be a possibility that'll probably play out just to have more exhaust right or more noise so oh my goodness gracious i've been following this one person like but the person's giving me good fuel mileage this person's such a slow poke I'm at 14 and a half miles per gallon. So on the one aspect, this person's a nuisance of the on the road for me because I know these back roads and they're putting down the road. They go really fast and they slow down because they don't know where they are. But once again, for me, this is, this is giving me a lot better fuel mileage. So it works for me. And you can hear that exhaust a little bit. And I'm in the auto. So that's pretty cool.